Okay, step one that I just went through said isolate the radical. Well, in this case, the radical is isolated. There is nothing else on the side that has the square root except for what's under the square root, the 2 minus 14n, all of that is under the square root. So the radical is isolated. We're good with step one. So to get rid of a square root, we are going to square both sides. Okay, square both sides. So 10 squared is 100. When you square a square root, it goes away. That's the point in doing it. So the right side is just equal to 2 minus 14n. And then look, it's not a square root function anymore. It's not a radical function anymore. This is just a linear equation. We have constants and we have n. So we just need to solve this like we would any other linear equation. So subtract 2 from both sides. 98 equals negative 14n. And then divide by negative 14. Fractions are possible on this. Okay, not all the answers are going to be whole numbers. This one is, though. Okay, so um, n is equal to negative 7. Always, always, always check your answer. Plug it back in to the original equation. The square root of 2 minus 14 times negative 7. Close the parentheses. That does give you 10. So you're good. n equals negative 7 is the answer. Okay. Uh, let's look at number 4. Okay. Number 4. We don't have to do anything to isolate this radical. It is already isolated. It's on a side by itself. So all we need to do is square both sides. Squaring the square root makes that go away. So we just have p over 5 on the left side. 2 squared is 4. We're dividing p by 5, so the opposite of dividing by 5 would be multiplying by 5. p is equal to 20. Yep. p is equal to 20. Okay. Check it. This one's easier to check. If I plug it back in, 20 divided by 5 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. We're good. Okay, number five. That looks a little different. We have square roots on both sides. Guess what? These are the easiest ones of them all. And here's why. Because you have the square root of something is equal to the square root of something else. Well, if they're both under a square root, the only way they're going to be equal is if what's under the square root is equal to both sides. Or you could look at it this way. I got a square root on one side, so I need to square both sides. And when I square both sides, they were square roots. So it just cancels out. I've got what's left under the square root. That's it. Okay. Now, um, what I would do to solve this is I would start by multiplying both sides by 2. So I don't have to deal with that fraction over there. So P is equal to 20 times 2 is 40. Negative 2p times 2 is negative 4p. I have p's on both sides. I want it on one side. It's negative on the right side, so I'm going to add it to both sides so that I don't have a negative variable anymore. Five p is equal to 40. So then divide both sides by 5. P is equal to 8. Check it. Plug it into both sides of the equation. The square root of 8 divided by 2. Well, that's the square root of 4, which is 2. Square root of 20 minus 2 times 8. Well, that's 20 minus 16, which is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So both sides equal to, so we're good. P equals 8 is the answer. Okay, let's look at number 10. Finally, one where we have to worry about that first step. Okay, that first step that said we needed to isolate the radical. 
This one is not isolated because there is an 8 in front of this square root. So we've got to move it. Well, what, what's going on between this 8 and the square root? It's multiplication because there's not a plus or a minus there. So that multiplication, so to get rid of it, we need to... What's the opposite of multiplying? Divide. We need to divide both sides by 8. So 24 divided by 8 is 3. Now our square root is isolated. It is by itself. It doesn't have that 8 in front anymore. So at this point, we can square both sides. 3 squared is 9. 9 is equal to n minus 1. Add 1 to both sides. That says n equals 10. Check it, plug it back into the original. 10 minus 1 is 9, square root of 9 is 3, 8 times 3 is 24. Okay, number 13. Okay, number 13. That radical is isolated on the left side. It's by itself. There's nothing going on there. Okay, so we can just jump right in by squaring both sides. So we have 6 minus x on the left side. But notice the right side is not a number this time. It's x squared this time. So this is a quadratic equation. How do I know that? We have x squared, and we have x, and we have a constant. That's a quadratic equation. In order to solve that, We've got to set it equal to zero and factor. So that means I need to move both of these terms by adding the x and subtracting the 6. I need to move both of those to the right side. And then factor. Um, 6, its factors are 3 and 2, and I need positive 1, so that must be positive 3 and negative 2. Set both of those equal to 0 and solve. So x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 2, especially when you had a quadratic and you get two answers. You should most definitely check those answers. Okay, so we need to plug this into the original and see if it gives us what we're expecting. The square root of 6 minus negative 3 is 3. Well, the equation said that it's supposed to equal x. What did I just plug in for x? Negative 3. But it gave me positive 3 as the answer. So negative 3 is what we call an extraneous solution. That means you get it when you're solving the equation, but when you plug it back in, it doesn't give you exactly the right answer. So that means we don't consider negative 3 as an answer. Let's check 2. 6 minus 2. That does give us positive 2. So x equals 2. Even though we got two answers when we were solving it, we need to throw out the negative 3. Neg or positive 2 is our only answer. Negative 3 is what we call extraneous. Okay. Now, number 17 is the most complex of these equations that we're going to have to deal with, okay? So let's look at number 17. The radical is not isolated, first of all, okay? We're going to have to move something. Well, this time it's negative x plus the square root, so that means we need to move that x to the other side. It's negative, so we can move it by adding 
now our square roots by itself and it is equal to positive x minus 2. What do we do once the square root is isolated? What do we do to both sides? Square it. Square both sides. So the left side, the square root is gone. The left side is 39 minus 2x. The right side, what did we have to do during for our ACT question of the day? x minus 2 squared is not x squared minus 4. We need to FOIL that. x minus 2 times x minus 2. So that is x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. So overall, that's x squared minus 4x plus 4. It's a quadratic again because I have x squared, I have x, and I have constants, so everything needs to be on the same side as the x squared. So I'm going to add the 2x and subtract the 39. 0 is equal to x squared. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. 4 minus 39 is negative 35. Now what do we do? What do we do with that quadratic? Factor. So we've got x times x. What are our factors of 35 that add to give us negative 2? Mm -hmm. 7 and 5. Which one needs the negative? 7. Negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. So that means our answers <coughs> excuse me, are 7 and negative 5. This is especially the case where we definitely need to check them. Because a lot of times when you get two answers, one of them gets thrown out, but not all the time. So let's plug it in. Negative x, so negative 7, plus the square root of 39 minus 2 times, bless you, 2 times 7, gives us negative 2. So 7 is okay. Now we've got to plug in negative 5. So we have negative, negative 5. Okay, notice I kind of put some parentheses around it there because, see, the x in the equation has a negative already, but my value is negative. So i got to include both of those. Plus the square root of 39 minus 2 times negative 5. And that gives me 12. That gives me positive 12. So that's not, that's another extraneous solution. I'm fine with you just marking it out, but I am just writing it out to get used to that term. Okay, it is extraneous. X equals 7 is the only solution. Okay.